Good morning, everybody. Well, actually, probably the time you watch this, it might be afternoon, um, because as you know, we have had some problems this morning with the uh, live stream. So hopefully this, this um, service will come to you and you'll still be able to sit down as families and join in and couples and on your own at home and join with us in worshiping God this morning. Uh, we're all live here um, in, in the Hope Center and um, we're just, we've, we're really missing you all. And I think it, this kind of emphasis some of the frustration that we sometimes feel. As you can see at the Hope Centre we have gone a little bit Christmassy and today is the start of our Christmas celebrations. One of the things that I suggested was for you to get some, some um, card and some colouring pencils kids uh, to make some Christmas cards. So our idea was that you could make some Christmas cards this morning during the service maybe with a Christmas scene on it and, um, and then send them out you know maybe somebody in your street pray about who you're going to send them out to and and just you know send it out to other people um to give them a message of encouragement maybe somebody else in the church and when you've done it i would love to see your photos um, so please do send them send them to my email which is faye at hopecorby.org and um and i'd love to see them and i might even get some to you um, um for the for those that are really good but if you're living as far as south africa i probably can't get them to there and um, we've got some great things coming up this morning. Paul is going to be um, sharing the word with us. We've got some live worship and we're going to be having communion together. So if you haven't got communion stuff, then you can pause this video and um, go and get your stuff and um, we'll celebrate communion together. Um, I wonder if you've got your Christmas decorations up yet. I've, I've got my Christmas tree up. It's, a, it's the first, first time ever that it's this early that I've got a, my Christmas decorations up. And we'd love to hear from, you, hear from you about whether you've got your decorations up or not. Now, behind me is an advent calendar. And my family, well, we started off, we, we thought we might read a chapter of Luke every day with Cal, from Cal's Challenge last week. But we, we got a bit dramatic with our readings every day and uh, decided that we'd only read part of it. So we've only actually got to chapter two in, in, um, in Luke uh, when we're, we're sitting doing our advent cal calendar every day. But I'm wondering what verse might be in the calendar today. So just give me one second. I'm going to go. You can't see it on the camera but it actually has the six. I wonder what verse is going to be on here today. Ah, it's Mary's song. So just as we prepare ourselves to worship, I'm going to read a little bit of uh, this verse, uh, of this song that Mary sings to God, and then we're just going to go into a time of worship together. It's in Luke 1. It says, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. Lord God, we thank you this morning. That it's such a beautiful morning outside. And Lord, we thank you today that you are good and you are the same yesterday, today and forever. And when technology works and when technology doesn't work, Lord, you are still the same yesterday, today and forever. And Lord, today we just this time over, time over to you and pray that you will uh, help us to worship you in our homes, wherever we are, in Jesus' name. Amen. Song. 
Let faith be a song that overcomes the raging sea. Let faith be a song that comes a storm inside of me. Let it rise. Let faith arise. Whoa. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Oh, fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Giants fall, oh fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we praise you.
ringing through the heavens, long awaited Savior, come to set the captives free. Come to set the captives free. Come set us free. What a wonderful name. 
Church, it's such a joy and a privilege to be coming to your homes this morning for us all to share this Holy Communion together. I hope you've had such a wonderful week as well as wonderful beginning of the new month of Christmas. Hooray! Brilliant. Great. So if you've not really set yourself up for the communion, I'll give you some few seconds quickly. Just dash off and just get your bread and get your wine for us all to uh, share the Lord's table together. Right, uh, reading from 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three to 26, Paul gave instructions to the current church as to how to institute this Holy Communion. He said to them, on that very night, the Lord was betrayed. On that very night, he took the bread and after he's taking the bread, he prayed over it. He blessed it. And after he's done that, he broke it into pieces. And he gave it out to his disciples and said, Take it. This is my body broken for you. Anytime you do this, remember me. In the same vein, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it. 
and say, this is the new covenant that I give to you with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. So if you've done that, shall we take our bread? Remembering the body that was broken for you. And afterwards, we take in our wine. I want us to reflect something that John the Baptist said in the book of John 1 verses 29 and 26. The Bible says that when he saw Jesus approaching him, he said, this is the lamb that takes away the sin of the world. That was the first time. Then the following day, he saw Jesus approaching him again. And he repeated the same thing. This is the lamb that takes away the sin of the world. And I began to reflect on this. What is the significance of what John said uh, to Jesus? This is very important. And I realized that, yeah, that was really true. The lamb that was sacrificed in my place. The lamb that hung on that tree that very faithful afternoon. The lamb whose body was broken into bits. The lamb that blood was streaming down his face, his whole body. Who was beaten for no sin of his. That lamb on that very day on the cross made one very important statement. It says, Father... Forgive them, for they don't know what they do. If it were to be me, broken into bits, beaten, torn into bits, falsely accused, and disowned by my own friends. With blood streaming down. Testy, hungry, weak, tired. What would you have done? I would have probably said some nasty things. I would have asked the hellfire to rain down on my enemies. How much more? The Lord who did not sin. Instead of these things, he prayed for forgiveness. And as I reflected on this, I said to myself, God, give me a heart like Jesus. A heart that will be able to forgive. A heart that will not harbor bitterness and grudge and, 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 and anger and hatred because of what people have done to me. A heart like Jesus that I need. It's my prayer that this will be your prayer as well. That you will learn to forgive. That you will learn to make amends with people who have hated you. With people who have treated you bitterly. With people who have treated you unkindly. Is it your mom? Is it your friends? Is it your dad? Is it your children? Is it your parents? Your parent, parents. Is it somebody or a colleague at work who have more treated you? My prayer for you is that you have a heart like Jesus. God bless you. And I hope that you enjoy the rest of the rest, uh, the rest of the service this morning. So I'll see you again. Have a Merry Christmas. Good morning, Limitless Jesus.
So good morning. We have um, some notices of things that are coming up in the um, next couple of weeks. The first thing is the lockdown is over, which is great, which means youth is meeting here later on today at the Hope Centre, um, which you need to book into. And the second thing is that next week uh, we have another prayer and share event at St Ninian's, which will be at 7.30, so that's the 13th of December. And again, you'll need to book in for that. And booking is open. You can book in now. We had a wonderful time last time, just a time to share what God has been doing, pray together, and we'll have some kind of reflective worship. We won't be able to sing, but we can still kind of, you know, soak in the Lord's presence and being together. So um, do book in. We would love to, to see you um, if you feel um, safe to do so. We've got all the kind of procedures in place to make it as safe as possible. And uh, we would love to see you then. Um, but we've also got some stuff coming up over Christmas. So we have got a video and a few notices on here. Good morning Limitless Youth, it is Advent and Christmas is coming and we wanted to let you know about a couple of things that are coming up this month to celebrate Christmas in a whole different way. It's been a different kind of year so we're going to celebrate it in a different kind of way. First thing on Wednesday this week, that is Wednesday the 9th of December, we have a Christmas celebration on Zoom from 7 o'clock. We'll have Christmas games, Christmas songs, a Christmas message and just to celebrate Jesus together. Hey, you just call me Keep It Warm by my campfire and we would love you to join us on Friday the 11th of December as we have stories around the campfire. Bring your hats, bring your gloves, put your scarves on, your warm coat and maybe shoes you don't mind getting dirty and come along and also I've had this hot dog hot dogs and hot chocolate so what more could you want we'd love to hear your stories of things that have changed your life and we're going to tell you some of ours and because we're out outside we're also going to be able to sing we have two sessions you need to book in in order to come the first one is from year, year seven to nine and that is from 6 30 to 7 30 and the other is for year tens and above and that's from eight until nine we'd love you to join us and come and keep warm by our camp December, up to six people can meet outside in a private garden. And as most of us haven't seen each other for months, we thought it'd be great to get together for a bit of fellowship. So I'm encouraging you to join in our Super Six weekend or on Saturday the 12th, Sunday the 13th of December. Dress warmly. I've got three pairs of socks on in my wellies. Get your gazebos up. Get your fire pits going and invite however many people make up to six along with all or part of your household for either breakfast, lunch or supper. But keep it simple, just have soup and rolls, buy the soup and the rolls or make them whatever and just invite people in. I'd really encourage you to invite people you perhaps don't normally see and certainly those that are living on your own. You can invite, invite them, as I say, for breakfast, lunch or supper. You can ask them to bring their own chair, their own mug, their own bowl and spoon. Just supply the soup or even get them to bring soup themselves. But just get together for a while and send us photos of you, you enjoying yourself in your December garden. We want to see who's got the silliest hat and the biggest coat.
Right, thanks. Um, so, we come to that time in our service when we're going to take up our tithes and offerings. Uh, I'd ask those of you who give electronically by backs or by standing order or by uh, uh, um, pay through um, to think about what you have given to the Lord um, this month and uh, I just thank you for that and those who are going to use the GIBT I just ask you to think about and prepare your hearts about what you're going to give to the Lord as you give uh, and to just ask him to continue to bless that um, money and to use it for his service here at Hope Church. As part of that, I'd just like to read before Garrel leads us uh, in, in a song of worship while we give. I'd just like to read um, the Paul Bauer version. You won't find this on the shelves. The Paul Bauer version of Paul's words to the Philippians at the end of Philippians chapter 4. We know what it means to lack and we know what it means to experience overwhelming abundance. And we find that the strength of Christ's explosive power infuses us. Our hearts overflow with joy when we think of how you showed your love to our ministry for the Lord here at Hope by your financial support of our ministry. For even though you have so little, you still continue to be generous at every opportunity. And I thank you. I'm not telling you this because we're in need, for we've learned to be satisfied and trust God in any circumstances. You've so graciously provided for our essential needs during this season of difficulty. You, Hope Church, that sowed financially and you support us regularly over the years. As Paul to the Philippians, I would mention not this not because I'm requesting your gifts, but so that the fruit of your generosity... Uh, uh, so that the fruit uh, of your generosity may bring you an abundant reward. We receive your gifts, you, uh, uh, and view them as sweet sacrifices, perfumed with the fragrance of your faithfulness, which is so pleasing to God. I'm convinced that my God will fully satisfy every need you have, for I have seen the abundant riches of glory revealed to me through the anointed one, Jesus Christ, and our God, our Father, will receive all the glory and the honour throughout the eternity of eternities. Amen. Bless you, brothers and sisters, as you give so generously to the Lord, and I just pray his, his abundant blessing on you. A hallelujah. 
verses 1 to 14. In the beginning the world already existed. The word was with God and the word was, was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into this very world he created and the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, it gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the Word became human 
and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Thank you, Remy, Yemi, and Tomi. Also known as the Afons. Bless you. Thank you for that. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word dwelt amongst us. We're going to be looking today at uh, God with us, Emmanuel. What an amazing thought that God is with us. And of course, um, we immediately think of Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, where Matthew is quoting from Isaiah 7, verse 14, which says, The virgin will conceive and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Those word, that word means literally God with us. And we're here today as we start thinking about our Christmas period and as we're building up to Christmas to start by remembering that God came to this earth to be with us, to be with me, to be with you, to be with each one of us here in the Hope Centre now, to be, to be literally with us. Do you know that God is with you today? The last verse that, uh, that, 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 that they so beautifully read to us says, the word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. God came to this earth to dwell with us, to dwell with us. I want to share a little secret with you. Do you know that when God came to earth, he came to redeem us? And do you know that was always his plan? Always was his plan. It wasn't a, 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 it wasn't a second plan. It wasn't his B option. It wasn't an alternative because it all went wrong. He always planned to be on this earth with you, with me, with our brothers, our sisters, with those... 2,000 years ago when he first came on that first Christmas. It was always his plan. How do I know that? Look at Genesis. Look at chapter 3, right at the beginning of Genesis. Chapter 3, verse 15, it talks about, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. That was God... Literally, God speaking to Adam and literally prophesying that Jesus was going to come to earth to crush the enemy. That's right at the beginning. This was not a second option. This was always God's plan that he was going to come to this earth. Read it again a little bit later in Genesis chapter 22, verse 18, where um, God is talking to Abraham. And he says, through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Through Abraham's offspring. Who's Abraham's offspring? Look in uh, Luke chapter 3, I think it is, uh, or, or Genesis, uh, Matthew chapter, two, chapter 1. And you can see the genealogy of Jesus. Abraham is there. From Matthew, he starts with Abraham. From uh, Luke, he starts from Adam, but he goes through to Abraham. Abraham is there, and you go all the way through, begat, 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 and Joseph begat Jesus. Jesus was that sea, uh, was that offspring that God was talking about right there in Genesis 22. One of the earliest books in the Bible, it's quite a lot later uh, in, our, in our ordering, is Job, Job chapter 19. Job chapter 19 talks about, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end, he will stand on the earth. He will stand on the earth. Job was again referring to Jesus. And if you carry on, you can find lots of references to Jesus in the Psalms. You can find lots of references to Jesus in, the, in Isaiah, Jeremiah, and all of the prophets. 
it was always God's plan to come to this earth to be with us to redeem us to buy us back because he knew we were going to fall and we can love him even more because he's redeemed us it was always his plan to redeem us it was always his plan to save us from our sins because he knew that our sins were going to come we were going to disobey we were going to go our own way he gave us free will and he knew that as as part of that we would go our own way and we would cause a division between us and God we would be separated from God when uh, when Adam was told not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil he was told that the day he would he would surely die that meant on the day that that fruit was first eaten sin came into the world and death means separation from God Adam and Eve and then all of us his descendants because we too have that sin that tendency to do wrong things has caused a separation from us uh, between us and God he knew that God was going to come God was going to come in the form of Jesus to restore our relationship with us we can have a relationship one thing God wants above everything else is to have a relationship with you to have a relationship with you to talk to you not just daily but moment by moment in every aspect to be involved in everything in your life he wants to give us to give you eternal life he wants you to give you that hope of spending eternity with him not just the 70 years or so that we get to spend on this earth but the whole of eternity to spend that with him he wants you to give a life while you're living here on this earth and in eternity of abundance 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 he is an exuberant abundant generous beautiful wonderful God and he wants to just give you so much he's got so much more and more and more but as I said when we um, allowed that sin to come in a big divide a chasm appeared between God on the one hand and us on the other hand and there's a big big chasm and we can try everything we want we can try good works we can try uh, helping people we can try giving to people we can try all sorts of things to try and bridge that gap but not whatever we do our righteousness the right things that we do the good deeds that we do will never never bridge that gap we will always fall short that's why God came and he came in the form of Jesus Christ and he came as we remember in a manger and he was born and he lived the perfect life so that he could die on that cross and as dying on that cross that cross bridges the gap between you and God between me and God between us and God Jesus came to this earth to die to take the sins the wrongs that we do upon himself that we can be redeemed to him that we can have an eternal destiny with him that we can have relationship with him if you don't know him as God with you right now can I invite you can I just pause what I'm doing right now and invite you to invite God into your life so that he can be with you right now there's a little prayer going to come up and I'm going to just say it and I just invite you if you've never said this prayer if you've never asked Jesus to be the boss of your life if you've never asked God to be with you to change your life to redeem you to restore you to himself to buy you back into his community say this prayer with me dear Lord Jesus I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life 
I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Saviour. If you've just shared that prayer, if you've just said that prayer for the first time, if you've just said it again and come back to him, know right now that God is with you. In Paul's letters, he talks about that God's spirit comes inside us as evidence that we are now his children. The word becomes flesh and dwells among us. That word is dwelling amongst you now, maybe for the first time, if you've just said that prayer. If you have, I'd ask you to just write to us at elders at hopecorby.org, elders at hopecorby.org, or send us a Facebook message on the Hope Church site, or email Faye, or, or myself, or Damien, or WhatsApp us, or message us. Just let us know so that we can get something to you to help you in your journey, so that you can learn more and more and more about God with you and what it means. Thank you. I want to just talk briefly now about what happened before God came to us in human form. Before Jesus came to this earth, before Emmanuel was born, before God left his throne in heaven uh, and put on the, fle the form of flesh and restricted himself to that bodily form of Jesus. What happened? How did God talk to people? How did God communicate with people? How, did, how was God with people then? And if we look in the Old Testament and we can find that God, sometimes, yeah, he did speak to individuals. He spoke occasionally to them. He spoke and walked with Adam. He spoke uh, and walked with Enoch. He spoke to Noah. I don't think Noah saw him that often, but he spoke to Noah. He spoke to Abraham. Again, if you read the story of Abraham in Genesis, from Abraham being 75 until he was 100 in those 25 years, there's two or three chapters where there's occasions when God talks to Abraham and once where he appeared to him in the form of the angel before um, Sodom and Gomorrah. He spoke to Jacob, he spoke to Jacob in dreams. We hear about the, read about Jacob's ladder, the dream of the ladder going to heaven. He spoke to Joseph, he spoke to Moses, he spoke to Gideon, he spoke to, he spoke to Joshua, he spoke to so many people. And he spoke to them in dreams, he spoke to them in visions, and he spoke to them in, in ways like that. So he spoke to some individuals, occasionally. Okay, His presence was dwelling in uh, this earth, but at that time his presence dwelt in the tabernacle between uh, the, uh, the, 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 the cherubim on the top of the Ark of the Covenant in the tabernacle, which was the tent which God told Moses to, 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 to make and gave him the dimensions and directions for. And then... When, uh, when Solomon built the temple uh, and uh, when the temple we heard about uh, over the last few weeks being rebuilt through, uh, through um, prophecy to Ezra and Nehemiah uh, uh, and then Herod's temple, he dwelt in, those t in the, the temple. He spoke through prophets. But generally speaking, before God came to this earth in the form of Jesus, he came at specific times for specific reasons, for specific occasions to do specific things. He came for those specific times. And furthermore, if you look um, to just after uh, the story of Ezra, which, which we've been hearing about in, in recent weeks, and after the children come back from, um, come back from ba Babylon... There had been a period before John the Baptist's announcement to Zechariah, um, before Joseph's announcement to Mary and to Joseph, where there had been several hundred years where there had been no word from God. God hadn't spoken through prophets. He hadn't spoken to individuals. There seemed to be a complete absence of God. And that's the background of what had happened just before Jesus came. There had been complete silence. God with us? Well, 
we don't know, we're not feeling him, we're not hearing him, we're not seeing him. And then the announcement of Jesus' birth, Emmanuel, all of a sudden, God was no longer this, this being who was up there who nobody knew about. They'd heard and they had their rules and their regulations, but nobody was, he wasn't talking to anybody. All of a sudden that changed. God came to this earth and he dwelt through on this earth, physically in the form of Jesus. And then after Jesus died and he was resurrected and raised again on the third day, he then ascended to heaven. And he said the reason he had to go to heaven was so that the Holy Spirit could come and be with each and every single one of us. God has now come into this earth after that time. He came at that time in the form of Jesus and is now still with each and every one of us, inhabiting, inhabiting us individually and inhabiting his church corporately as his new temple, as his dwelling place. He's here all the time. He's talking to each one of us and he's talking to us constantly. Maybe sometimes we don't hear because we're not listening. If you are feeling God is not with, with you at the moment, it's not because God's not with you, it's because you've turned your back. Turn around again. God's there and he's wanting to talk to you. He's always with us. He's dwelling inside our very beings. His Holy Spirit is inside of me. His Holy Spirit is inside each one of us here in the Hope Centre. His Holy Spirit is inside of you right now. Stir up that spirit that's in you and exercise the gifts that God's given to you and know his presence near you right now. He gives each one of us words. He gives us dreams, he gives us hymns, he gives us songs, he speaks to us in so many different ways. His word is there every day, but he talks to us, literally. He wants to involve himself right now in every aspect of your life. Not just the big things like, shall I get married or shan't I get married or shall I buy a house or not buy a house, but shall I go for a walk this afternoon and have a chat with your God? What am I going to have for dinner today? What's God provided for me? What do you, he wants to literally involve himself intimately in every detail of our lives. The intimacy he wants with us is far more than any, any intimacy we have with any family member, including our wives and our husbands. He wants to be so intimate with us. He wants to involve himself and be invited to partake in every aspect of your life. He never wants to be absent from us. Nothing can separate us from God. If you have invited Christ to be the Lord of your life, he is with you right now. He'll be with you in a few seconds time. He'll be with you the rest of this day, the rest of this week, the rest of this year, next year. He is with you always. You are not isolated. You are not socially distanced from God. You are not quarantined from God. He is always with you. No matter what our circumstance, he is always, always with you. Not only is he with us in that sense, he's also with us in so many different ways. Do you know God is your greatest cheerleader? Do you know God is so proud of you? Do you know God is actually, wow, that's my boy, that's my girl, look at him go, look at him doing this. Wow, isn't he amazing? That's what God thinks of you. That's what God thinks of you. Get that into here and into here and into your spirit. God is so proud of you. He is your biggest cheerleader. He has given you abilities to do the things that he wants you to do. You are not a failure. God is cheering you on. Not only is he cheer you, your cheerleader, he's in it with you. 
He's up to his armpits in it with you. He's getting stuck into each of your circumstances. He's fighting your battles with you. Stand up and he will fight your battles with you. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we raise a hallelujah. He is fighting your battles with you and for you right now. Sorry, I'm getting a bit excited here. I better calm down. <laughs> He's in us. He enables me. He enables you. He enables each of us. He's empowering us. He's equipping us. Do you know he, he will always give you the, 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 the energy, the ability, the, the equipment to do what he's asking you to do. He wouldn't ask you to do it if you didn't have the equipment. And he's equipping you. He's equipping us as a church corporately as well. Slightly different subject, but God is with us. He's picking us up when we're down. He's carrying us on. He's encouraging us. He's building us up. God is able. He is able. Because he is able, you are able. Because he is with you. He is in you. And in him... We can do all things. We are more than conquerors. Do you know you're a conqueror? Paul the conqueror, Caleb the conqueror, Gerald the conqueror, Margaret the conqueror on your birthday. Happy birthday, Margaret. Whoever, it, you are conquerors. You are more than conquerors because he is able. What's God's name? When Moses asked God, who shall I say sent me? What did he say? So he said, say, I am that I am. I am. I can do anything. I am everything. I am all things to all men. He is right now. Not will be, not can be, not has been. All of those things are true, but he is right now. And he always will be. He always will be. Let me remind you of that, those verses in Romans 8 from verse 31. I've already said it once, nothing can separate you from God. Nothing can separate me from God. Nothing can separate us from God. Some verses you can go to to remind yourself whenever you need to. Romans chapter 8 verses 31 to 38 then say, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for, all, for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who, what, when, where shall separate us from the love of God? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or wake nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Now in all things we are more than conquerors. I've used that phrase once today already. More than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. I think it's worth re repeating those last two verses again. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will ever be able to separate me will ever be able to separate you, will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, knowing your head, 
knowing your heart, knowing your spirit that God is with us. God is with me. God is with you. Excuse me. I'll say that again. God is with you. Act as if you know it. My final encouragement this morning is be bold, be strong, be very courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. But the Spirit of God doesn't make us timid but gives us power, love and self-discipline. Amen. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters. i
this morning what an amazing message just felt like God's heart for for us as Paul was speaking this morning um so powerful um and just pray that you know if that really spoke to you please do get in touch with us because we would love to hear from you we'd love to pray for you for you to know this God who is with you today um just just a reminder to book onto the prayer and share event and um, just keep connected, Lord. Uh, we know that it's difficult to keep connected at this time, but, but we're praying that the Lord will help us to connect together, uh, one and all. And also, I would love to see your Christmas cards, so please do send those photos in. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and give you his peace. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>